New World is the next big MMO launching in the West, and the beta is due to start on the 20th of July, running until August 2nd, and then the full launch is happening on August 31st. This is a launch that has been delayed for well over a year, so during that time there has been a lot of changes made to the game, more so than you're probably aware of if you've not been keeping up to date. This video we're going to assume you last played New World during the summer preview event, and didn't pay much attention after that, and I'm about to word vomit the last 12 months of major updates into your lap, including letting you know which issues they addressed. And if you appreciate that, make sure to like this video, leave me a comment if you're not a shy boy, and subscribe to help me reach 100k subscribers because that would be cool. If you were to summarise most people's complaints during the summer preview event, it would pretty much go as follows. Networking wasn't amazing, the siege system didn't make much sense, enemy AI was bad, there was a lack of content both in PvE and PvP, the combat was restrictive with the three weapons and the shared cooldown system, Quest progression was pretty bad since the game had no narrative built into the questing, and the quests were pretty much all identical to each other throughout. Pretty much all of these have been addressed throughout the last 12 months, so we might as well go over those details. First off, one of the big changes, you can now trade in duel with other players, no more dropping items on the floor for people to pick up. In fact, that feature has been mostly disabled, you can now drop stuff, but they're only visible to you, and they're going to vanish after a short period of time. Oh, and you remember the stagger? Pretty much not a thing in the game anymore in PvP, and the life staff dash that everybody used mandatory is not a thing anymore. Probably the biggest change to the new world will come entirely as a shock. The game is now Holy Trinity, and what this means is that there are defined roles for content, tank, healer, and DPS, and a real threat or aggro system. They altered the way healing works so that the healer actually targets people, and this means they have shifted to focusing on more structured PvE content, of which during the preview event they had almost none of at all. They now have some dungeons in the game which they call expeditions, and these currently all are pretty much structurally identical as far as I can tell. You enter with five people, three DPS, one tank, one healer, and there are two bosses in each expedition. This system uses what they're referring to as orbs, which gain you access to the dungeon. You're going to get one of these from an introductory quest for the dungeon most likely, and then after that you're going to have to gather materials and craft them to be able to run the dungeons again. These orbs are going to have limited crafts per week, with higher tier dungeons having a smaller cap, so you can run the higher tier dungeons less. This is of course a big change to New World and a big focus shift, as this changes from the game being almost entirely open world content, to that of a more structured system. And this brings us to the next point, Battlegrounds. Or at least Battleground for now. This is called Outpost Rush, it's a 20 versus 20 battleground that you unlock via the main story questline at level 40. And yeah, there is now a main story questline that not only has quest text, but also voice acting as well. The battleground is fairly complex, so the basics are as follows. Two teams, two forts, one each. Multiple control points in between. Control these to gain points towards victory. Kill enemies to gain points towards victory. Gather things to summon creatures to help you win. Kill boss type creatures to help you win. Gather materials to build upgrades to the stuff that you control. And there is more, but you know, you get the idea. In terms of the combat, the previous system we had was as follows. Each player could select any three weapons to use, and they gained experience while using that weapon in combat to level up a talent tree of perks and skills. You had three abilities that you could use on each weapon, but the cooldown was global across all three. So basically you had access to nine abilities, but you could only ever use three of them in a short period of time. And even if you swapped weapons, you were cooldown watching basically. So this had been completely changed. You now get to select two weapons instead of three, and the cooldowns are not shared between each weapon. This goes about three layers deeper, also since weapons now actually have stat reliance. Every time your character levels up, you're going to gain attribute points, and at the level cap, I think there's 190 total. And then you're also going to get attribute points based on the gear that you equip as well. Each attribute does something different, and they have break points where you're going to gain specific perks, both for in combat and for gathering, depending on the attribute you're leveling. Each weapon has a different attribute reliance, which will scale the damage based on which attribute it uses, which means you're going to want to use weapons that are in line with your character build. On screen, you're going to see which weapons uses which stats. So this is a whole new level of customization added into the game in terms of character build and weapons. They also redesigned almost all the weapon talent trees to make them more unique from each other and have specific use cases. They've added more weapons such as the spear, the ice gauntlet and the rapier, and they have changed how the armor works as well as armor ratings. Previously, you just had heavy, medium and light armor and they had different encumbrance stats so you could move faster or slower, have more rolls, roll in different ways, etc. They now give buffs and debuffs depending on what you're wearing, so light armor is going to give you more damage, heavier armor is going to give you more resistances to things like stuns, slows and roots. And of course on top of this they've added in critical hit chance on weapons, some weapons have higher crit chance than others. And there is also backstabs as well, so positional combat is going to be a big factor in this game. 
So they also altered pretty much the entire progression system of the game, how you tackle enemies, how gearing works, and much more. Some highlights from this are leveling is slower and harder overall, and it gets harder as you go ahead. Level 50 it gets particularly more difficult. Enemies get additional buffs the higher level they are compared to you, so no more rushing to monsters that are double your level and farming experience as they have things such as they can't be staggered, they stagger you more, they have more armor, they have more damage, higher aggro range, and instead of just knocking you out so you can be revived, they will kill you immediately. They added some type of elite enemy system, which operates sort of like an ARPG, and this goes hand in hand with elite POIs, elite points of interest that are going to have like elite chests and things. So there's elite enemies, champion enemies, and essentially the system is there are three current categories, such as offensive, defensive, and utility, with more to come later, hopefully. And each of these elites or champions are going to have one to three of these traits from these categories, so they're all going to play differently. They're going to be harder or easier, depending on that, uh, your typical ARPG thing. They also have named pieces of gear now. This is a big new change, so there's hundreds and hundreds of new named pieces of armor, weapons, trinkets, things of that nature. The crafted ones are going to require rare resources from various areas of the game, whether that's rare chest drops, rare dungeon drops, rare world drops, or rare gathering drops. All of these have unique stats and backstories. And speaking of crafting, they've made it much more relevant in most stages of the game, as well as removed the old salvage system, which kind of devalued crafting. Because essentially you used to be able to just pick up items or get items from any kind of means, and then salvage them and you would get crafting materials. You now don't, so basically to get higher tier crafting materials, you have to actually have somebody gather and then process them, etc, etc. They've also made the crafting system so you can kind of mix and match goods and tiers of materials when you're making things. So you can have a varying level of quality depending on how much good stuff you want to use, whether you want to use some higher tier stuff, some medium tier stuff. And there is also a crafting cap on your skills of level 200 now. In terms of PvP content, the Siege system got a massive overall in terms of how selection for the wars is handled. The previous system was not very good, didn't make a lot of sense, it went a little something like this. Three factions, one faction owns a territory, all the two factions can do activities in that territory and gain points, pushing the area into conflict. Once the area is in conflict, any guild could pay the wager cost and declare themselves as the potential vanguard of the war, meaning they would be the leader. The system would then roll a dice and whoever won was the vanguard. This means guilds that contributed little to nothing to the war effort and guilds that didn't have the required strength to actually win the war could just randomly be chosen as the leaders and then they could obviously select all the people from other guilds to join them if they were in their faction. It was essentially so that you could do all of the work and get none of the reward or you could do almost nothing and be rewarded for it. The new system tracks your guild's participation and assigns you with the percentage contribution which is used as a weight when signing up for the war. So the more you contribute as a group, the higher chance you have of being chosen as the vanguard to lead the war effort and a chance to take over the territory. They also added in areas of the map that are in conflict where you can go and fight. These have a barrier that only allow 25 players per faction to participate at any given time, which means 75 player battles potentially in a semi quasi open world, I guess. They also made it so that open world PP has a larger incentive. You now gain experience, faction tokens and item rewards when you kill a player. I know this isn't loot based, so the player you kill doesn't lose items. They just lose durability like they did before. And this change removes the 10% experience bonus that you used to get just for being flagged, but not actually fighting anyone. So there's less passive bonus for just being flagged and avoiding people and an actual incentive to go fight other players. The longer you're alive and flagged, the more rewards you're going to get and the more rewards people are going to be worth. So someone who freshly flags up for PvP will likely not give you any item drops, but someone who's been out there for a while will do. They've also reduced the durability loss on your gear by roughly 50%, which means it's going to be less of a pain in the arse to actually PvP people die and then be stuck not having repair kits by a pretty significant amount. Some other notable changes are that they overhauled a lot of the UI, the loading screens, the menus, everything generally looks better, it's easier to track quests, it's easier to know which quest is closer, the navigation is just overall generally improved, there's more fast traveling, they've also removed manual sprinting, it's now an automatic thing that just happens, altered default keybinds to make more sense, dodge is shift, jump is space, visuals have been updated a ton, towns look different now, not every settlement is identical, armors and weapons have a ton more visual diversity, and of course they added a massive title and achievement system that allows for you to do certain in-game activities and be rewarded with titles, which they recently reduced the amount of to try and make titles feel rarer and thus more highly coveted. This doesn't touch upon most of the changes honestly because this video would be two hours long if I did, just to illustrate that if you played New World at any time previous to the last 10 months or so, you're playing an entirely different game almost. 
they've listened to what people said, they've added tons of content, they've changed most of the game systems, and hopefully once we all get to play on July 20th, we're going to see a much more polished experience with a ton more content that's inarguable. They've added so much to this game at this stage. Whether or not the combat and everything feels good, the balancing, there are things we're going to have to look at, but I am optimistic for the game and they've they've made so many changes that I, I'm really looking forward to playing this personally. So you can come and hang out with me on my Twitch stream if you want when it launches. I will be playing for the first few days of beta. Probably not going to burn myself out playing too much since it is launching in like a month, but I'm going to check out the changes, see how everything feels and how excited I should be for when it actually comes out. So thank you as always for watching. Social links in the video description. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, appreciate you all. Stay safe out there. We out. Peace.